Hello everyone, welcome back to our platform Agri Edict. I am Tulsi, your educator for the subject Entomology and Nematology. Today's Nematology lecture will be on Nature of Damage. Let us start our today's lecture. In this lecture, you will be knowing about the nature of damage, symptoms caused by the different nematodes and classification of nematodes based on parasitism or feeding habits. Uh, why there is a need to study about the symptoms? Identification of the symptoms becomes most important in the feed as the plant exhibits different types of biotic stressors like it may be due to insect, nematode, fungi, bacteria and even different types of pests are present in the soil fauna. Like that, um, the plants exhibit different types of stressors. And uh, if we identify a specific symptoms, then only we can apply efficient management methods. So it becomes very important to know about the symptoms which is caused by different types of pests. Plant parasitic nematodes mainly attacks all types of plants like herbs, shrubs and trees. If they possess mainly needle-like spear or stylate, which is used to puncture the cell. And this uh, stylet will help to cause infection and uh, will help in the entry of the plant, uh, uh, entry of the nematode to the, into the plant, host plant. Generally, roots are attacked, but plant aerial parts are also being damaged by the plant parasitic nematodes. Aerial parts in the sense stem, leaf, flowers. Some of the nematodes which we only feed on the aerial parts of the plants are attacking uh, aerial plant parts. Uh, the damage which is caused by the nematodes has been broadly classified into the direct damage and indirect damage. Direct damage mainly affect the plants in case uh, in terms of uh, loss of yield and also some of the symptoms like wilting, uh, stunting and yellowing also can be seen through direct damage. And in case of indirect damage, they act as a Modifiers, they act as wounding agents which will uh, help for the other uh, entry of other secondary plant pathogen. Let us see what, are, what is direct damage and indirect damage. And uh, in the direct damage, as the nematodes feeds upon the plant cells and it ingests the cell contents uh, due to the ingestion of cell contents, like it becomes divided of the cytoplasm and, uh, and it causes death of the cells which leads to the formation of necrotic areas. And intracellular and intercellular movement of the nematode within the plant tissue within the plant tissue causes mechanical injury to the cells. Formation of some of the feeding areas like uh, specialized feeding areas like Jan cells in case of root knot nematode that is Miladogyne and Syncytia in case of cyst nematodes. These types of feeding areas are formed in uh, uh, in case of the plant in case of uh, this type of nematode in order to uh, make it efficient for uh, easily feeding and pre-emergence death of the seedling. In, uh, in nematodes like sting nematode mainly attack the growing tip of the plants which cause death of the seedlings and feeding and death of specialized tissues. Uh, this may cause direct loss to the direct yield loss to the plant. For example, in case of weed seed gall nematode, that is anguinate reticide, as, they, as it enters into the floral primordia, uh, instead of developing into the seeds, those uh, will develop into the galls. So, direct, direct yield loss can be seen in, in such types of uh, infection. And even in case of pine wilt uh, disease, that is, uh, which is affected by the pine wilt nematode, uh, Bursapilincus xylophilus, uh, here, the resin production will be drastically reduced. And coming to the indirect damage, um, nematodes will act as mechanical wounding agents because as, the, as it punctures to the plant tissue, it causes formation of wounds, which uh, act as a, uh, which forms a um, efficient method for the invasion of fungal and bacteria and cause infection. Host modifiers, here the nematode as it enters into the plant system, it causes biochemical and physiological changes in the plant host in such a manner that uh, whenever the host, that is uh, whenever it enters into the 
host plant nematode enters the host plant it modifies the host uh, physiology in such a way that it uh, becomes more uh, prone to the secondary plant pathogens that is bacteria and fungi and even uh, it also causes the it also makes the host in uh, to divert the nutrient and the water which is absorbed by the roots to the nematodes itself instead of moving it into the shoot system rhizosphere modifiers uh, nematode uh, plant infection causes the plant to secrete some of the root exudates which may attract the secondary pathogens like bacteria and fungi resistance ba uh, resistance breakers uh, in uh, uh, in certain uh, resistant varieties or cultivars uh, which are showing the resistance to some of the bacteria some of the fungi or nematodes breakdown of resistance takes place due to mechanical injury which is caused by the nematodes these also act as vectors of pathogens uh, some of the nematodes will carry bacterial and the fungal spores on the body of the nematodes and transfer from one place to another place and even these are also excellent uh, uh, excellent carriers of vectors on their body and uh, transmits the viral diseases from one plant to another plant uh, examples are zifinema the uh, zifinema longidorus trichodorus para trichodorus and interference in the nitrogen fixation we know that in the pearls crops mainly nodules are present in the root system uh, these nodules are uh, help in nitrogen fixation if a nematode attacks the root system the uh, impair uh, it cause impaired growth of the root system and thus uh, fixation of uh, nitrogen is also affected by reducing the size and number of the nodules in such types of plants and some of the common symptoms which are caused by the nematodes are like leaf discoloration stunted growth reduced leaf size and fruits lesions on roots galls reduced root system finally leads to the wilting uh, let us see these in detail Uh, there are mainly types of injuries uh, which is caused by the plant par parasitic nematodes uh, to uh, there are many two types that is symptoms caused by produced by above ground feeding nematodes and uh, below ground feeding nematodes let us see one by one in detail first is above ground feeding nematodes above ground feeding nematodes mainly attacks the plant plant parts like as i said it is uh, leaf stem flowers or other any Uh, above plant parts let us see one by one first is symptoms which is produced by above ground feeding nematodes first symptom is leaf discoloration here um, i had explained uh, symptoms along with the uh, nematodes um, nematodes examples in a uh, uh, specific host plant uh, it is most important to, to remember the symptoms along with the host host plant the leaf tip becomes white in rice due to the rice white tip nematode that is apelanchoides besiae uh, hence the name white tip nematode here here you can see in the first picture if a nematode that is a rice white tip uh, rice white tip nematode if it gets attacked to the rice plant the entire leaf tip that is it becomes initially white in color later it turns into brown in color due to the attack of the nematode apelanchoides besiae and in other cases like uh, in case of uh, chrysanthemum the leaf turns into yellow color you can see here turning into yellow color which is attacked by the folia nematode that is apelanchoides retsambosi and the uh, other symptom is dead or devitalized buds as the nematodes will attack the growing points of the plant or growing pa parts of the plant the entire uh, plant show, uh, doesn't show any growing and becomes blind Uh, it is in case of uh, strawberry plants which is infested with the apelanchoides fragilis which affects mainly the growing point and kills the plant and results in the blind plant and next is seed galls uh, it is seen in weed seed gall nematode that is anguinea triticide as i said that it is uh, it mainly enters into the floral primordia initially and instead of developing this into the seeds they will develop into the galls which consist uh, which consist of j2 j2 juvenile stage of nematodes uh, and this uh, stage of nematode can even survive up to 28 to 32 years in dormant state only because uh, why why they are entering into the dormant stage because of 
some of the extreme environmental conditions. So these can also seen in the cockled wheat grain. And uh, like this, the in uh, infection uh, uh, spread spreads from one plant to another plant through the seeds of wheat. Here you can see in the fourth picture, this is the wheat seed. Uh, this is the in uh, wheat seeds which are infested by the wheat seed gall nematode. Uh, initially, those are in uh, light light in color. Later, becomes darker in color after some days. Next is twisting of leaves and stem. Uh, in the first picture, you can see here how the leaf has been twisted. It is due to the attack of the nematode that is stem bulb, stem and bulb nematode that is Dytilenchus dipsi in onion. Crinkled or distorted stem and foliage. Uh, the, here as the nematode that is wheat seed gall nematode will attack the foliage uh, foliage and even the stem or even the floral primordia due to the infection the entire leaf uh, entire leaf and stem becomes distor uh, show distortions like this bending you can see here and next is necrosis and discoloration necrosis is nothing but death and here the red ring disease which is caused on the Coconut, we are mainly caused by the nematode that is Radin apilenchus cocophyllus. Here, whenever the nematode here, the, whenever the nematode enters into the um, coconut uh, coconut plant, that is, uh, it enters into the stem beneath the two centimeter. Initially, only red color spots can be seen. After some days, these spots will coalesce and turns into a uh, three centimeter wide. Uh, 3 cm in width and uh, form into a red color in circular form. This hence the name hence the name is called as red ring disease of uh, coconut, which is attacked by the Radin apilenchus cocophyllus. And next is lesions on leaves and stem. Small yellowish spots can be seen on the onion stem and leaves, which is due to the Dytilenchus dipsi and the lesion nematode that is leaf lesion, which is caused by the apilenchoides. Ritzum bozai, which is on chrysanthemum. Next, up, up to here, we have seen only the symptoms which is caused by the uh, above ground feeding nematodes. Now, we will see uh, symptoms which is caused by below ground feeding nematodes. Below ground feeding nematodes will mainly feed on the root portion. So, will exhibit uh, both symptoms like above ground symptoms and below ground symptoms. Because if a nematode has been attacked to the root portion, root growth is impaired and also it will affect the vascular tissue which will inhibit the translocation or which will uh, destroy the uh, uh, vascular system by uh, by which it uh, by which the translocation of water and nutrients doesn't takes place to the uh, shoot system and hence it also exhibits some of the above ground symptoms like stunting wilting or yellowing in case of uh, nematodes which are feeding which are feeding underground portion also so let us uh, know what all the symptoms which are caused by nematodes which are feeding underground that is above ground symptoms and below ground symptoms above ground symptoms initially you will see stunting reduced plant growth can be seen and the plants can cannot be able to withstand the adverse conditions because as a nematode starts feeding in the feeding in the root system uh, the entire root system get destructed and hence uh, the plant is not able to grow properly and uh, it is not able to withstand the adverse conditions. The main thing one we have to remember in case of nematode damage is uh, patchy appearance of field. Any symptoms will be in patchy. That means as the nematodes are distributed unevenly in the field, unevenly in the field, hence the uh, symptoms will be in patchy appearance of anything. It may be stunting, wilting, it will be in patches. Like if it is a field, a uh, group of plants will be exhibiting the nematode infestation like this. Here, here some plants, here some plants like that. Some of the plants will exhibiting uh, nematode infestation. This is the main characteristic symptoms in case of nematodes because uh, here, uh, nematodes will also exhibit some of the symptoms like yellowing, stunting, discoloration, as it is um, uh, makes confusion with the nutrient deficiency symptoms. So, by seeing this, by carefully examining, we can able to know about the uh, 
uh, plants which are exhibited by uh, plants uh, showing the symptoms caused by the nematodes. Patches of stunted plants will appear in the field. Uh, some of the examples are potato cyst nematode, that is Globodora rostrochinensis, and in case of sysamum, that is gingeli, that is heterod caused by heterodora kajani, and in wheat, it is caused by heterodora aveni. And coming to next symptom, that is discoloration of foliage. Patchy yellow appearance in coffee, which is due to Pratilencus coffee and Globodora rostrochinensis, which uh, infests potato plants, also shows light green foliage and Tylenculus semipenetrins induce fine mottling on the leaves of orange and lemon trees. Yellowing is caused in Yellowing is normally a symptom which is caused by nematode. Uh, uh, even though there is a sufficient moisture, even though there is a sufficient nutrients which are present in the soil, the plant is unable to extract or uh, unable to take off the sufficient uh, nutrients from the soil because of nematode damage. So hence the plants will exhibit main uh, same uh, symptoms as like of nutrient deficiency symptoms like yellowing, discoloration, yellowing discoloration. These kinds of symptoms will mainly confuse with the nutrient deficiency symptoms also. Next is wilting. This is the one of the most characteristic symptoms of the nematodes, daytime wilting. Which it is due to the attack of Milodogyne species that is root knot nematode. In hot weather, that is in daytime, there will be hot conditions. Uh, here the nematodes, uh, root knot nematodes which are infested with the uh, plants which are infested with the root knot nematode is not able to withdraw the uh, withdraw the water water from the soil even if there is a, a lot of moisture which is present in the soil. So, hence uh, it is due to severe uh, damage which is done to the root system and which leads to the day wilting of the plants. Uh, in uh, mainly which are the plants which are infested with the root non nematode that is Milodogynes species, daytime wilting can be seen which is called as incipient wilting. Only during daytime as the plant is unable to withdraw the uh, withdraw or absorb enough, moist, uh, enough moisture from the root surface even if it is uh, having excess uh, even if it is the uh, soil is comprises of more uh, enough moisture but it is not able to absorb uh, that is no uh, and cause wilting of the plants during daytime and it becomes normal in the evening evening hours so this type of symptoms can only be exhibited by the uh, plants which are attacked by the nematodes and next is below ground symptoms that is root galls or knots uh, this uh, symptoms is a char characteristics formed by the root knot nematode that is the melodogyne, hence the name root knot. Uh, I will explain in very short sense how uh, root galls are formed or knots are formed in the plants. Whenever the nematode that is melodogyne will enter into the root system, uh, it will secrete uh, it will uh, secretes protease enzyme. And it, uh, we know that protease mainly will act on the proteins. It leads to the breakdown of the proteins into amino acids, mainly the tryptophan will be produced in excess quantities. Uh, as we know that tryptophan is the precursor for indole acetic acid, which causes a condition called hypertrophy and hyperplasia and causes enlargement of the cells due to increase in number and uh, due to increase in its growth. Hence, the formation of root galls will take place. Here you can see how the galls are formed. Normally, uh, the main difference between the galls and nodules are these are morely, most commonly hard in texture and these cannot be easily separated from the root system as in case of no nodules they can be easily separated and even the nodules are beneficial in nature as they help in nitrogen fixation but the nodes are uh, harmful in nature as they cause uh, infection to the root system and apart from the milodogyne species there are also other galls which are formed by the uh, other nematodes like uh, false root galls which are formed by 
nacobus batatiformis on sugar beet and tomato here the name is false root because false root galls because the mechanism of gall formation differs from uh, gall formation which is formed by the milodogeny species and some of the small galls which are produced by hemicycliopora arenaria on lemon roots and datilenchus radicicola which cause root galls on beets and oats giphenema diversicordatum cause galls on root system it is uh, it is very important to remember the examples along with their host plants in uh, jr of point of view and uh, coming to next symptom that is root lesions uh, root lesion is mainly formed by the uh, nematode that is pratilenchus species so only the nematode is called as lesion nematode the penetration and movement of the nematode within the root system will cause typical root lesions uh, which is exhibited by the pratilenchus species uh, on prosendra and even the burrowing nematode also exhibit some of the uh, lesion symptoms like it will be in uh, orange to purple in color and spindle in shape is the main ca distinguishing character of the rhodophila similis uh, mainly affecting the banana even these types of symptoms uh, lesions can be seen in the plantation crops like uh, coconut arecanut also and uh, similarly pratilenchus coffeae also exhibit uh, lesions and even helicotylenchus multicentus cause reddish brown lesions on bana banana root and corn this uh, this is the root lesions initially they will be uh, for lesions will be formed and later it may turns into br uh, brown color and uh, discoloration will takes place and even rice root nematode that is ischemoniella also exhibit brown lesions on the root system reduced root system in case of uh, nematodes uh, they will main as they mainly feed on the root tip and uh, which causes uh, growth uh, growth is arrested and the root, root will produce branches instead of growing they will starts producing the secondary branches and uh, there are again classified into coarse roots stubby roots and curly tips here the uh, let us see what are coarse roots and stubby roots coarse root it is mainly formed by paratrichodora species here the infestation which will arrest the growth of the lateral roots which means the if it is a root lateral roots will be the growth of the lateral roots will be arrested instead of that only the main root will be developed that uh, system is known as open root system this is seen in paratrichodorus and stubby roots uh, here the lateral roots will produce more excessive rootlets that means more kind of branching can be seen see you can see in the picture this is a root which is infected by the paratrichodorus crestae here the minute rootlets can be seen on the lateral root surfaces which impair the root system next is curly tip here the injury is caused by the giphenema species and uh, the nematode uh, instead of uh, will uh, in, uh, nematode will cause the uh, retardation of the elongation of roots and uh, form curling of the roots like this curling will takes place and the symptoms in is uh, referred as fish book symptom next is root proliferation uh, increase in the root growth or excessive branching due to the nematode infestation might occurs and here uh, instead of developing the roots uh, instead of developing or uh, growing of the roots uh, horizontally or uh, vertically the here the excessive branching will takes place and also excessive root hairs are formed at the point of nematode infestation some of the examples are trichodora christi nacobus heterodora melodogeny hapla and pratilenchus and next is root rot uh, as the nematodes will feed on the fleshy structure of the plant body like uh, it may be feed on the bulb or uh, stem of the nematode uh, which causes rotting of the tissue examples are yam nematode that is cutulonema bradis and in potato that is datilenchus destructor which cause root rot these are the symptoms which are caused by the nematodes next is classification of nematodes based on parasitism or based on feeding habit there are been broadly classified into parasites of below ground plants and parasites of above ground plants 
uh, in case of parasites of below ground parts there have been uh, nematodes have been divided into three types that is ectoparasitic nematodes semi endoparasitic nematodes and endoparasitic nematodes uh, let us know um, in short what are ectoparasitic nematodes semi endoparasitic nematode and endoparasitic nematodes in detail uh, ectoparasitic nematodes as the name itself indicates ecto which means outside this nematode doesn't enter into the plant tissue itself here the entire life cycle of the nematode will leave will be in the soil itself these nematodes will live freely in the soil and move closely or on the root surface and feed intermittently on the epidermis and root hairs near the root tip uh, in case of the ectoparasitic nematodes here the nematodes will um, doesn't enter into the root system and uh, these uh, mainly feeding occurs mainly by staying outside the root outside the plant uh, system plant tissue only and they have been classified into two types that is migratory ectoparasite and sedentary ectoparasite uh, here the migratory which means that uh, it can move from one place to uh, one place to another place and cause infection so this the, these types of nematode doesn't uh, produce any doesn't exhibit or doesn't uh, form any permanent uh, feeding uh, relationship with the plant host here the examples are zifinema longidoras and trichodoras most commonly these nematodes will move from one place to another place and spend their entire life cycle freely in the soil itself and uh, these uh, when the roots are disturbed they detach themselves and uh, move to the new host and cause infection and next is sedentary ectoparasites sedentary that means they they will stay at one place only they won't move from one place to another place they uh, that uh, so only they, they they are comprising of long stylets to make efficient uh, uh, efficient relationship with the plant body by staying outside the plant tissue examples are hemicycliopora arenaria and cacoporus pestis in this type of parasitism the attachment of the nematode will be to the root system uh, which is permanent as i said that it is uh, it establishes a permanent relationship with the host plant this uh, you can see how the nematode as a so nematode is staying outside and starts feeding like this uh, ectoparasitic nematodes mainly live in the soil and cause infection to the uh, and cause infection to the host plant and starts feeding by staying outside the plant only and coming to the next class next type that is semi endoparasitic nematode semi that which means that off endo means inside if you understand the terms you will be uh, easily able to uh, uh, understand the concept easily see half inside which means that half of the body that is head and neck will be inside the plant tissue you can see in the figure this is the citrus nematode uh, here the head and uh, neck will be inside the plant tissue and remaining posterior part will be outside the plant tissue like this the intra, uh, the parasitic relationship uh, ship will be taken place between the host plant and nematode and again this uh, has been classified into two types migratory semi endoparasitic and sedentary semi endoparasitic nematodes if, uh, migratory uh, as i explained in the ectoparasitic nematode here also these types of nematodes will move from one place to another place and cause infection uh, whenever the juveniles will start feeding on the feeding on the plant tissue that is root tissue uh, after completion of uh, after completion of cellular content they will get, they will get detached from the plant tissue and will uh, will be moving to other host plants uh, for new infection it moves from one side to other side and here the eggs are not deposited in masses examples are spiral nematode that is helicotylinchus haplolemus that is lance nematode and tylenchorhynchus that is stunt nematode uh, for easy remembers you can uh, keep in mind like sls which is nothing but spiral lance and stunt comes under the migratory semi endoparasitic nematodes next is sedentary semi endoparasitic nematodes here the permanent uh, feeding site is established by the nematode uh, he, and eggs are laid in masses around the body of the root surface the major examples are rotulenculus reniformis and tylenculus semipenetrans 
you can see in the picture this is the xylencular semi penetris which is uh, uh, feeding inside the plant body whenever this type sedentary semi endoparasitic nematode starts feeding uh, the posterior part will become bulges or becomes swollen and uh, as in case of uh, rotilenculus reniformis it assumes in kidney shape so the name is called as reni uh, reniform reniform nematode like this in case of tilenculus semi penetrans also the body of the poster posterior body of the female will becomes bulge or uh, swollen so it establish a permanent feeding site next type is endoparasitic nematode here the entire bod entire nematode is found inside the root itself because so the name is called as endo which is inside the entire life cycle of the nematodes will be completed within the plant tissue itself without um, staying outside the plant tissue or in the soil here the major portion of the body found inside the plant tissue you can see in the picture this is a pratilenca species which is inside the plant tissue and even this is the melodagenic species which is staying inside the plant tissue uh, there are again class uh, they have been classified into two types that is migratory and sedentary Uh, the example of migratory are Istimaniella, Pratilenchus, and Rhodophyllus similis. And these types of nematodes uh, move in the cortical parenchyma of the host root. While migrating from one place to another, as they feed on the cells, they will get multiplied and cause necrotic lesions. So uh, here the example is that is Pratilenchus lesion nematode also. And these also can survive in root stubbles. or other underground plant parts like uh, in uh, in the form of eggs or juveniles and coming to the next uh, next type that is sedentary endoparasites uh, here these are the most advanced plant parasites um, uh, which is uh, these are the most advanced plant parasite that is uh, come uh, examples are heterodora species and meridogynous species because here the only the second stage larva will uh, which is a infection state will penetrate the root system and uh, there after after in, after entering into the root system uh, it becomes sessile and stay at one place and that means it becomes sedentary and completes its life cycle within the plant tissue itself inside the root cortex so only these types of nematodes are called as are advanced plant parasites this is most important next is parasites of above ground parts up to now you have seen the nematodes which are attacking the below ground parts it is parasites of below uh, below ground parts now we will see parasites of above ground parts uh, above ground parts uh, we know that they mainly feed on stems leaves buds and inflorescences um feeding may takes place in both terms that is ectoparasitically and even endoparasitically and here as they feed on the plant tissue uh, obviously they eggs are deposited in the plant tissue itself and uh, as i explained in the ecology class uh, most of the polya nematodes they will enter into the cryptobiotic uh, conditions why because they uh, due to uh, extreme environmental conditions hence these types of nematodes Uh, can survive even under the extreme environmental conditions also again they have been classified into three categories that is gall forming non gall forming and with, uh, nematodes which are transmitted by the insects uh, let us see uh, the examples which comes under the gall forming here the nematode that is weed seed gall nematode will enter into the floral primordia and the formation of galls will takes place so the name is called as gall gall nematode and even the other nematode that is uh, angvina balsamophila also forms galls on the leaves and non gall forming nematodes examples are stem nematode and folia nematode here the nematode like ditilenchus gypsii and will comes under the stem and bulb nematode mainly affects the stem region and folia nematodes that is apilonchoid species and uh, the nematodes uh, which comes under the uh, classification that is which are transmitted by the insects are pine wood nematode and red ring nematode pine wood nematode is bursapilinca xylophilus here the nematode uh, normally uh, transmitted by the insect which is uh, pine sour beetle 
that is monanthes alternatus these uh, insects while feeding on the plant tissue will take up the nematode along with the plant tissue and transmit it to the healthy plant and even in case of red ring nematode also same mechanism will takes place uh, here the red ring nematode which is uh, caused by radinapelenchus coccophilus and it is transmitted by the palm weevil that is uh, rhinchophorus palmarum here the insects play a major important role for transfer of nematodes from one plant to another plant like from infested plant to healthy plant uh, this is about the parasites of above ground parts so uh, today's uh, lecture as uh, it is mainly uh, comprises of symptoms and uh, some of the examples are examples so you have to remember uh, most commonly what are the symptoms caused by the nematodes and what are the plants it is attacking and uh, and types of types of uh, ectoparasitic uh, examples comes under the ectoparasitic nematode endoparasitic nematode and semi endoparasitic nematodes because uh, like uh, like these types of questions will be asked in the competitive exams so this is all about the today's lecture that is nature of damage and meet you in the next lecture thank you